Hello and welcome to this second tutorial on learning the tools in Premiere Pro. Today we're going to look at the rolling edit tool. And this is the rolling edit tool. I've moved my tools to the right of my timeline. Generally speaking when you open they tend to be up here. But I decided I prefer mine down here to the right of the timeline because I think they're easier to grab if you're actually using your mouse and not using keyboard shortcuts. Uh, if you want to know how to do that see my previous tutorial on creating custom workspaces. Now the keyboard shortcut for the rolling edit tool is N. Um, which is on the bottom line of your keyboard just above your spacebar. The reason that they've chosen N isn't for any particular meaning, but many of the shortcuts for the tools are actually on that bottom layer. So you've got V, which is close to B, which is close to N, which is close to X. If you look at them, they're all close together, and then C. So you can see that they're all close together apart from perhaps this one, which is A. They're not all exactly on the bottom line, but they're all fairly close. So you can get to your tools very quickly with keyboard shortcuts. Now the rolling edit tool is all about deciding exactly where the edit point between two clips takes place. Now I want to demonstrate this both with a standard clip but also with a multi-camera clip which is where it really shows its most power. So let me just take an in point for this particular clip. We want to choose the in point's going to be from the beginning so if I just click the out point button I've got it to just where the butterfly leaves the leaf. Click that and drop it down and let's just accidentally pull it out a bit so the cows show and then let's choose a second section where we've got some birds let's choose it from there start in point and to say just about there click it and drop it and drag it on there now I've got an edit point between the two and actually I don't really want the cows there I've got the edit point in the wrong place now of course I could simply trim this back and do a ripple delete or I could use the ripple edit tool and pull it back but say that my clip is exactly the length I want it to be and all I want to do is change where this transition takes place without changing the length of my timeline how can I move this so that I get rid of these cows which are annoying because I don't really want them and I have a little bit more burden I can move this edit point back well I could pull this back and then trim this one to meet it so I could kind of do that and then this one to pull it to meet it and then I've effectively achieved it but there is actually a better way so I'm going to do control Z to undo that a couple of times it is the rolling edit tool and you select the rolling edit tool or hit the keyboard shortcut N and it is inactive until you are actually over a transition as soon as you get to a transition you click and you start to pull and in your program monitor you get some feedback now on the top left you are shown the clip before what would be the actual last frame before the edit and on the right you'll show what is the first frame after the edit of the second clip so with that feedback in the program monitor I can pull it back pull it back until I get the last frame of the butterfly which is just there as the butterfly is gone and let go now my clip or my timeline has remained exactly the same length the only thing that's changed is where the edit point has taken place and that has happened with the rolling edit tool. So there's the butterfly disappearing off and going straight to the birds and we've got rid of the cows just by using the rolling edit tool. Now this particular tool really comes into its own when you have a multi-camera edit that you've done. Now I've got a sequence. Sequence 1 here is my three cameras. I've got a three camera shot that I took here of a speech that somebody gave. Very interesting talk. So those are my three cameras and then I've got my multi-camera sequence here. If I double click that to open that. And there we have a section of it and you can see that I have already done the editing. So I've gone through and I've selected where all my cuts take place. Now they are all very rough. I've put the cuts in where I think that they should just about be. This is a guy in a church doing a talk with three cameras. A very good talk as a matter of fact. Um, but the cuts were just about where I thought they should go but what I really need to do is now go in and adjust all these edit points so that I can avoid some camera shake or camera wobble and all you simply do is go in and as you're watching through it if it doesn't quite change on the beat of a word or there's a bad movement in a camera just before it takes place all you can simply do is go in take your rolling edit tool and pull the edit you're not going to change the length of the sequence all you're going to do is change where that edit takes place so he changes there, we've got a close up and then suddenly we change to the next bit and you can see there's a bit of a camera movement going in. Say I wanted to get rid of the rest of the camera movement, simply go in, take my rolling edit tool and pull it across and now I've got him speaking, he turns his head and we've lost the camera movement. Previously we had the camera movement, if I pull that one back again, 
you'll see that we had him speaking and then as he starts to turn away we cut to the second camera but there was actually a camera movement there and it's a choice you have to decide whether you want the camera movement or whether you want the back of his head as this guy's bald I don't know I wouldn't know which one to choose so you can see that the rolling edit tool is absolutely ideal for not changing the length of anything but just moving the division point between one clip and another clip and it's absolutely invaluable and essential tool particularly when you're doing a multi-camera shoot well, I hope you found this useful, that you'll start to use the rolling edit tool and you'll find it as valuable as I have. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.